What's up YouTube? This is Dakin coming at you with another episode of Vampire episode 5 I do believe and we are going to just jump straight in. We didn't get a lot done Thanks last episode. My dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. <coughs> Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vamp. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Nice Indeed. tact. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. Nice to meet you. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. I feel played, Swansea fancies vampires. I'm glad Apologies. to see you. You've taken me by surprise. I'm very happy to see you. The pleasure is mine, Doctor. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions. Many. But a rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer has been compromised. Uh-oh. Here to help. Patients have been giving you trouble. <sighs> have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. You seem so nice. I believe you. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Oh, wow. Uh... Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. <laughs> I'm more than capable. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your I agent can do anything. In you could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. Oh no! I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Uh... Who would be so foolish as to threaten you? A kindred spirit. Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. <clears throat> what do you want of me? Your expectations. Please be precise. I don't want to kill As nobody. As the appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. All right, please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? I wanna know. 
I need blood too. It's only logical. I just need information. Excuse my impertinence, your ladyship. This is not an interrogation. I assure you that this line of questioning is in your best interest. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? That would if be the best. If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. I like how we're talking about it like it's plague or something. But it's not the plague! Wait, who are you? Okay, yeah, you're one dude. I'm a knight of the glorious battalion of Pembroke. Opium. I'm digging that violin in the background, though, to be honest. Sean. Thomas. Sean. Who the f. Piper. Sean. No one cares about Sean. Who are you? You're a patient. Okay, nobody cares about you then. What is going on over here? Okay, so I need to go in. To the... So can I cure these people though? Because I made like 11 things of... Uh... Another night with the glorious potential. Um. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon well, at the Pembroke Talking Hospital. to more people. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon. What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency. Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. <laughs> are you a patient I'm here? you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Hmm. Your enemies? Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. <laughs> oh, you are a vampire. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. <laughs> Ever heard of Cotard Syndrome? Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a 
a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I am immortal. Uh, uh, personal questions. Who are you really? Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Is she really affected by the syndrome? Thomas Elwood. Okay, I didn't realize that was her social circle, but... Have you heard of any blackmailing going on within these walls? I have no time for mortal games. My secrets are beyond their comprehension, Dr. Reed. You have no secrets. You tell you, everyone. Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Mistress of the Dark, huh? I'm locking on to everybody. I'm looking for the one dot. Oh, wait. It'd probably be good to use the. F I don't know if I talk to this person. Yeah. Dang it, I'm trying not to just sit here and talk Evening, to everybody like I did episode. Uh, personal questions. How close are you to Miss Horcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for our next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. No. Uh -huh. Her arm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. Did you let you let her bite you? So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Oh, that's so sad. Uh, Have you heard rumors of underhand dealings in the hospital? If you want to know what's going on here, you better talk to Miss Jones. She knows everything. Especially what she shouldn't. Goodbye, right, I feel like telling everybody. On every street corner. The Who daily are you? Routine. Okay. So now we're figuring out a little bit more about our little resident Good evening, Miss crazy couple. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Mm. Tell me, Thelma. Why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I, I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. Interesting. I've suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Well, that's not Would putting the ideas in her head. Mr. Elwood are romantically involved. No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. Even though he disguises it. 
But I am not the woman he needs. <laughs> no, for I am a vampire doctor. Okay, let's put ideas in her head then. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Well, that's interesting. We'll learn. I'll leave more. you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. We learned more about her and Tumis. It's locked, all right. Not anymore. It's not. Hey, sit down. I'm all right. Ah, Good so evening, now we can... Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Mm, give medicine. You are not a burden, sir. Healing you is my responsibility. And you have my gratitude for that. Details. Recovering no blood loss. Sweet. So. Uh, I don't know anything about him. Why did your mother have you hospitalized here? She oh. seems convinced this is a bad hospital. My mother just wants the best for me. She we already heard this. Me. She'd go all the way to hell and back to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Doctor. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Uh... I don't know Goodbye, how to get... Mrs. I don't know how to get their hints. All right, so evening, get, this sir. is going to be another run of conversations, I, I guess. We're going to be colleagues. Reed, yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Nice to Welcome meet you. Aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swanson's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. <laughs> Screw you. Uh... It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Aykroyd. Can also reveal the best. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money? Fame? Or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. I've saved me lives. Knowledge is our main weapon. Well, sh all right. Uh, I've saved this is ridiculous. Lives. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see, that is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. I Let's don't try know it what again. you've heard about me, but I, I don't question and what I said. I hope you Oh, okay. Uh, your life in London. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure, but my young colleague obviously disagrees.
And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? It can happen. I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. I'll trust your judgment. Well, see if it's. Oh, trust you. I really hope you're right about this, Doctor Ackroyd. I'm trusting your judgment on this. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Doctor Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Well, I'm not looking over your shoulder. If you have a problem with me, Doctor Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Jealousy will not do you any good. Uh, no. <laughs> Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. Since your tenure in well, this hospital... Well, losing the battle of wits. Perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're Hi, here me. to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation, they're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Hey, new hint available. Personal questions. Oh. Huh? Uh, you're live from London. Oh, okay. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Of that, you can be sure. Details. Okay. So... Now it's time to go do story stuff. But how I saved the one dude was doing a medical checkup on... Hold on, let's, let's, let's do I'm a I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you need my assistance? Not at all. I'm sure that you are used to gaining people's trust with your impressive skills. Well, it will not be the case with me. Thank you for your time. But you hit uh, R1 while you're talking to people. And it'll give you the option to... Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Uh, why for... Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Oh! You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. Yes. I was in the army. Let's open up old emotional wounds. Rip them up. 
Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. Oh, I just know that I'm shit. all that my kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children after losing their mother? They Let's play therapist then. as well. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Okay. So we figured out... Tell me about, Tell yourself. Me about yourself, Mr. Philip. I'm just a regular We'll guy get the story underway in just a second, I promise. I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Kind of sucks. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I will not let you down, my boy. Oh. You guys can't be fucking arguing. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Uh. What do you think of Dr. Aykroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Aykroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Aykroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Well, tell me how you really feel. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no I'm need a doctor. for doctor, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Shut up! <laughs> Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> How brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Oh, better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of... Blackmail. Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. One of those incompetent cunts slit a poor sod's vein. Uh... 
If I didn't know better, Miss Jones, I'd be inclined to say you enjoy this type of idle gossip. God's honest truth, Doctor. It's just the way it is here. Most of these bitches would let you freeze to death before getting you a blanket. Well... <laughs> ah, nothing more honest than an old woman. You seem to know more about the goings-on here than anyone else. Beware, Miss Jones, in case suspicion should fall on you. That's it. Blame the old and infirm. I see those little bitches' greedy little eyes. Just waiting for me to pop off, they are. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. Oh, wow. Their legs shut. Oh, I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Oh. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. Where one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. The patients and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. And what of my own life? Yeah. Damn. Good evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Oh, I thought it said stop sleeping with people or something like that. At <laughs> first, I was, I was just going to instantly click on it. What can you tell me about the strange man visiting one of the nurses during her shift? Let me guess. You spoke with that old shrew, Harriet Jones. Do not pay attention to her, Doctor. She's full of fanciful tales. She deserves our help. No matter how you feel about her, Miss Jones deserves our help. Who says I don't care for her? Hate is what keeps that old crone alive. <laughs> she could have been telling the truth about the mysterious man. That old witch will end up in hell soon enough. Who cares if a nurse finds some happiness where she can? So it's you. Goodbye, Nurse Hawkins. That's that's what I gather from that. Cause she's like, who cares? Really? Nah, I care. If y'all screw it in front of my patients, it kinda they already uncomfortable. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Have you seen a strange man visiting any of the nurses here? I've never heard of such a thing, Doctor. Do you know if any of the hospital staff have criminal backgrounds? The people who work here all come from very different backgrounds, Doctor. Just like the patients. So yes, but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to get friends in trouble. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. So Dorothy Crane's the only one that knows anything, huh? Hey, it's this guy. Well, I mean, evening, why Thomas. should I treat Dr. you? Dr. Reed, still working at night, I see. I like that. And why is that? People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. <laughs> I can mesmerize him again. Uh, You're lucky to be alive, Mr. Cox. I hope you're starting to take better care of yourself. This place is full of sickness and decay. How could I get better in such a dump? Consider yourself lucky that I'm treating all of my patients equally. But don't push your luck. Don't play the innocent with me. I'm sure you have good reasons to act this way. And also weaknesses that can be exploited. Ooh. Can I punch him in the face? Uh. Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. Still fucking hurts. Boss, it cut me good. 
Yeah, he's dead now. Did he want revenge? You almost died. That there. man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Oh, I guess revenge gives you balls. Well, what he kind of answered want? this question. Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor asshole thought it would be easy to return the favor. Only the strongest survive, then. Survival at all costs. Is that all you think about? I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. <laughs> oh, really? How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty staff. But as long as I'm treated all right, I'll be fine. You, you keep... What's wrong? With the Pembroke staff. You keep that talking about my staff and I'll kill you. I thought he was going to break all my bones before I reached my bed. I see. Any other smart comments? The nurses aren't too ugly. Especially that foxy one, Nurse Crane. Pretty brunette, tough attitude, or like that. What's wrong with the hospital? Come on, Dr. Reed. The place is a dump. Smelly, sad, and dirty. But you're alive thanks to the efforts and dedication of the staff here, aren't yeah. you? What are you expecting, a medal? I thought that saving lives was just part of the job. Must be an unsatisfactory profession at this time, I'm sure. <sighs> How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. <laughs> Prepare to die soon. Oh, Jesus. Uh... We can't escape the consequences of our actions. The past catches up with us in the end. I ain't afraid of death. I don't hide who I am. I live my life honestly. Which is more than I can say for most folks. And who are you then? I'm the leader of the Wet Boot Boys. One day I'll leave this shitty place and punch in the face all who thought I would not come back. Mm -hmm. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. I'm gonna go tell on you. I seen mobster pop up. Daddy Reed's coming to get you. Ah, forget I said that. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I ought to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then. When you go Not back like to hospitals chapel, either. You may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. Nice mustache. Dickhead. So fast. No. Oh, she's gone. We're gonna go get this thug, guys. We're gonna kick his ass. You with me? You better be. I will lead us to victory.
Oh, your health does regenerate. Popular sewer. Poplar sewers. He's locked the door behind him. I need to find another way to follow him. Why well, lock that door if the door, like right beside it, is unlocked? That makes zero good sense. This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Oh. Oh no. Yeah. Whoop his ass. Pick him up, bite him on the neck, and then kill him. Now, where the hell is he? Gotta pick him up and bite him on the neck so I can. Kill him easier. So, where's all that? Follow the blood. Hopefully, this isn't like too hard to watch with like the blood. Or not, not the blood, just the. Trying to get through this in the gray screen and oh, how the fuck do I get in there? Okay. Uh, help. Oh, rogue skull over there. That's probably where I need to go. the dragon. Oh, that's our rat again. Maybe I'll have me like a little baby vampire dude. Make him serve me. Sewer beast. Oh, fuck. Oh, creature like this. It's a werewolf. Top thing. That's a dance of blades. Ow. Uh. Ah, bite. And yeah. Yeah, I'm a badass. Ow. Shit. Oh shit. Shit. I'm loving that violin, not gonna lie. Oh. Okay guys, so I did not realize that I've been recording for an hour legitimately, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to get cut out of this episode, 
But I am going to try to defeat this guy one more time. If I can't beat him, we will get it done in the next episode. We're going to do this, guys. All right? You guys have faith in me? Everybody in on... Everybody in and yell, Dakin on three. One, two, three. Dakin! All right. Oh, it helped if I didn't hit the wall. Also, he's like four levels above me. So, ooh, yeah. Well, I'm dead. All right. So, didn't get that done. Kind of disappointed. But, it is what it is. So, we're going to save and leave this episode here. I'll probably run my guy back and evolve him off screen just so we save time. And then next episode, I'll be <sighs> here to <laughs> fight this guy again. Or maybe do side missions and stuff. I don't know. But if you like this video, hit that like button, smash the subscribe, share it with your friends, hit the little bell so you get all more... All, having a stroke. Get all of your vampire control, the last of us, and more gaming content brought to you by Dakin Gaming 705. This has been Dakin. Signing off. Bye!